taint or gate holds back a pool of water, density equals 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, which is 2 meters deep. The radius of curvature of the gate is 2 meters, and it is 6 meters long. The mass of the gate is 1,000 kilograms, and its center of gravity is at the position indicated on the diagram. Assume that the point where the gate contacts the bottom of the pool is frictionless. Calculate the reaction force on the hinge. So we'll use the diagram that's given here as our given information. Add a couple of things to it as we reread the problem statement. So the density of this water we'll be assuming is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, as given in the statement. The pool of water is 2 meters deep, already given. Radius of curvature of the gate is 2 meters, and it is 6 meters long. So this radius of curvature is 2 meters, as shown here, but the gate is 6 meters long, so we'll set the width as 6 meters. The mass of the gate is 1,000 kilograms, and its center of gravity is at the position indicated on the diagram. So this is the surface of the gate, and of course it has struts connecting it back to the hinge point here, and the center of gravity of that entire assembly is right there, and so the weight is acting at that point downwards, 1,000 kilograms. So the mass of the gate is 1,000 kilograms. Assume that the point where the gate contacts the bottom of the pool is frictionless. So that point right there is frictionless. Calculate the reaction force on the hinge. So notice the hinge point is right here. So we'll put our find information here. And what are we asked to find? Reaction force in the hinge. So the reaction force right there. So the way we want to start this problem is with a free body diagram of the gate itself. and Look at all of the forces that are acting on it and from that develop a solution strategy to figure out what this force is in the hinge. So we start off with our assumption list. which we'll come back and fill out as we make assumptions. Analysis. And as I said, this starts off with a free body diagram. So first thing we do here is a free body diagram. So we draw our gate. And I'm also going to draw the struts that connect it back to the hinge. So there's a hinge point right there, and that's the surface of the gate. So what are all of the forces acting on this? Well, remember that it has a weight that acts from that center of gravity that's given. So that's the weight. There's certainly a reaction force at this hinge, which I'll call R sub H, reaction at the hinge. And notice I just draw that as a vector. It's a force acting at the hinge. It may have two components, it may have one component. Just show it as a general force. Our solution will tell us how many components it has and how big they are. Now there's water, of course, pushing on this. And remember that no matter where we go on the surface of this gate, the water is pushing perpendicular to it. So the water is, the resultant force is going to pass through that point. So I'll just show the force of the water as F sub S, the force of the fluid on the surface. Now also remember, because of the way the water acts perpendicular to the surface, there's zero moment around this point. So I'm not going to show any moment on this gate, just the force acting on it. So we've got our reaction force, we've got the force of the fluid acting on it, we've got the weight, and we're going to assume that this hinge is frictionless, so there's no moment in the hinge at all. Don't have to show a moment there due to the friction. So first assumption is a frictionless hinge. Now the other place there's a force here is down at the bottom of this uh, gate where it contacts the bottom of the pool. Remember we were told this point was frictionless, but there can still be a normal force there. 
so there can be a force at the bottom of the pool. So I'm going to show a force like this. Call that a reaction at point B or at the bottom of the pool. So those are all of the forces acting on this gate. So we've got our free body diagram. So now we can think about a solution strategy. We don't know this. That's what we're trying to find. We do know the weight. We don't know the force that the fluid exerts on there, but we certainly have a way to calculate that. We have our equation, which we'll be working with soon. And notice we don't know this reaction force. So if we were going to calculate this force through a sum of forces, then we're first going to have to find this reaction force. We'll need to find that for sure. Find the reaction force. We know this. So if we know these three forces, we can use a sum of forces to calculate that. So we want to think, first of all, perhaps, about how we could calculate this. Well, if we take a sum of moments around this point, that reaction force is not involved. The force due to the fluid is not involved because it passes through that point. The only two things involved in a sum of moments around there are the weight and the reaction force here. So a sum of moments around that point will find us this reaction force. So that's going to be step one. Sum of moments to find that reaction force. After we've got this reaction force, then a sum of forces will find us the reaction force at the hinge. So that's going to be the beginning of our solution strategy here. A sum of moments around the origin is equal to zero. So notice I'm going to be putting the origin of my coordinate system right there. So we'll go back up to our diagram and put a coordinate system on it here. That's going to be Z. And I'm going to put X in this direction. And again, it's arbitrary what direction you choose these, but it certainly makes sense in this case to have one of the axes at least aligned with G. It'll make the specification of G quite a bit easier. So that's what I'm going to go with. Z up, X to the left. So notice that means the Y axis is coming straight out of the screen towards us. So going back to our sum of moments, there's two things that contribute to it, the weight and this reaction force. So let's take a look at this sum of moments. Well, the weight, of course, acts straight down. And because this point is frictionless, that force has to act straight up. So we know these forces are in the vertical direction. And so all we need to worry about to calculate the moment due to those forces is the horizontal distance from that point to their line of action. So this one, the distance from here to here, was given in the problem statement as 1.8 meters. And the distance from here over to this line of action, we can figure out from the geometry given. We know this angle, and we know this distance. So this is 2 meters. And this is a 45 degree angle going down there. So let's take a look at our moment. The magnitude of our weight times 1.8 meters is rotating this thing in the positive y direction. And then the reaction force at the bottom here is rotating this thing in the negative direction. So minus RB. So notice this is just the magnitude of force RB. And this horizontal distance is going to be 2 meters, because that's 2 meters, cosine 45 degrees, because this angle here is 45 degrees. And those have to add up to 0. So our reaction at B, so the reaction at B is going to equal 1,000 kilograms. That's the mass, we're calculating this weight here, times g, 9.81 meters per second squared. So m times g is this uh, weight, times 1.8 meters is this moment arm, divided by 2 meters, times the cosine of 45 degrees. So that reaction at B, we can calculate out as 12.486 kilonewtons. And I want to express that as a vector in preparation for when we do the sum of forces. 
So the reaction at B expressed as a vector is equal to 12.486k kilonewtons. So notice it's in the positive z direction. And so I put a k in there to give it its direction. And we know that has to be purely a vertical force because there's no friction at that point, so it can't have any horizontal component. So while we're here, we're also going to express the weight as a vector in preparation for doing our sum of forces. So again, that's 1,000 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. So that's just mg. And this is in the minus k direction. So that weight expressed as a vector is negative 9.81 k kilonewtons. So we have our weight and our reaction at B ready for the sum of forces. So that we know and this we know. So we can calculate this force and we're ready to do the sum of forces. So now we turn our attention to calculating that force. So force is equal to minus the integral over the surface of P n dA. That's our expression for calculating force on a submerged surface. So we'll go in here and begin expressing these things. So our pressure gradient equals rho g minus a. And as soon as we write that equation down, we're assuming the fluid is in a hydrostatic state. So we'll go up here and we say fluid in hydrostatic state. And we're also going to say the acceleration is equal to zero. So this is not an accelerating system. So we can cross that acceleration off. G is equal to minus GK because our coordinate system, we have Z pointing straight up and G pointing straight down. So we only have a K component on this side. So we only have a K component on this side. So we can just extract our k component, and it tells us that the pressure gradient in the z direction is minus rho g. So from this, the pressure is equal to the integral of minus rho g dz. If we assume rho and g are constant, then this just becomes pressure is equal to minus rho g z plus a constant. So I've assumed rho and g are constant here, so I'll put that in my assumptions list. So rho and g constant. Now we solve for the constant by taking a look at our diagram and seeing if there's a z position where we know the pressure. So back up to the to the sketch here. This is our z coordinate and at this point here we know the pressure is equal to zero, or gauge pressure. So notice we're using gauge pressures here to take away the effect of the atmosphere pushing on the other side of this gate. So at this value of z, the pressure is zero. So what is that value of z? Well, we can figure it out from this geometry. Okay, This distance is two meters. This complete distance there is two meters. And the distance from here to here is 2 sine 45. So 2 meters subtract 2 sine 45 will be that distance. So we can go down and uh, solve for our constant of integration doing that. So at z equal h, that'll be our 2 meters, minus r sine pi by 4. So that's 2 meters sine 45 degrees. At that point, the pressure is equal to zero. So we substitute these two things into this expression and solve for C. So the pressure is zero is equal to minus rho g. Z is h minus r sine of pi by 4 plus C. So therefore, C is equal to rho g h minus r sine pi by 4. 
And finally, our expression for pressure is equal to rho g h minus r sine pi by 4 minus z. So pressure is a function of z. All of this stuff is just a constant. Okay, So it's going to be along for the ride, but it's just a constant. Of course, we know rho and g. So that's our pressure. The next thing we see in our force integral, we've got an expression for pressure, is a unit normal. So we want the expression for the unit normal. Now, go back up to the diagram and notice the unit normal is always perpendicular to the surface, projecting into the fluid. So no matter where we go on that surface, it's projecting into the fluid and it's perpendicular to the surface. So in this case, because it's a curved surface, the unit normal is not a constant. And the most convenient way to express this unit normal is to set up a coordinate system here just for the purpose of integrating on this surface, which is an r theta coordinate system. So I'm going to define an angle here, theta, which is measured from the positive x-axis and it increases in the clockwise direction like that. We're actually free to define this theta however we want. We can define theta equals zero wherever we want, and we can define positive theta any direction we want, as long as everything we do after that is consistent with that choice. So what I mean by that is if that's the way I'm going to define theta, then my unit normal here, and I'm just going to write it down here so we can look at this diagram while we're doing it, the horizontal or the i component of that is going to be cos theta in the i direction and the vertical component will be sine theta in the k direction. So those are the two components of my unit normal. And notice this already has a magnitude of 1. Okay. So we'll just uh, put that down here. So cos theta i plus sine theta k is our unit normal. And our element of area, again, we're using polar coordinates here for the integration because it's much, much easier to cover that cylindrical surface using those coordinates. And so the element of area here that we'll be using is r d theta. So that's a little arc length along here. So this capital R is 2 meters distance from here to here. d theta is just a little tiny angle. And the other direction, in and out of the screen, it's dy. So r d theta dy, where that r is a constant 2 meters. So I'm going to put that down here as well, where we're about to assemble our integral. So we've got everything we need to assemble this integral. The only thing we'll realize when we do that is we have a z in this pressure expression. So the other thing that we can see from our diagram here is that z is actually equal to r sine theta. Okay, So we can say that here as well. z is equal to r sine theta. So everything inside the integral now can be in terms of theta. So time to assemble this expression for force minus double integral, and we'll come back and put limits on that in a moment. Our pressure expression is rho g h minus r sine pi by 4 minus z, but instead of z, we're going to put r sine theta in there. So that's our pressure, our unit normal is cos theta i plus sine theta k. And our dA is r d theta dy. The last thing we need here is limits of integration. So in the theta direction, we're going to be integrating from minus 45 degrees, which is there, up to this point. So our first limit of integration is this value of theta, which will be minus 45 degrees. 
and our second limit is going to be there, which is whatever angle that is. We'll have to figure that angle out. For now, I'm just going to call this lower limit theta 1 and this upper limit theta 2. So we'll just put our limits of integration on here as theta 1 and theta 2. And we'll substitute numbers in for those when we're finished the integration. In the y direction, which is our second integral here, we're just going from 0 to w. And that was our uh, constant value of uh, 6 meters, I believe it was. So the next step, we'll take everything that's constant out of this expression. And while we're doing that, we're going to perform this y integral. Notice there's nothing in here that depends on y. So we can do this y integral right away. So we have minus rho g. Those are constant. This r is also a constant. So we'll pull it out front. And this w that results from the first integral, we'll pull that out front as well. And then we have our theta integral from theta 1 to theta 2 left to do. And I'm going to just start to multiply this out. So notice what we have here. We have two terms here, a constant and one that depends on sine theta. And we have two terms here, a cos theta and a sine theta. So we need to distribute that out to see what all of these terms are. So h minus r sine pi by 4 times cosine theta i plus sine theta k. So multiplying this first term by that, minus, I'll distribute that into those two, r sine theta cos theta i minus r sine squared theta k d theta. So now we're ready to integrate this. So we have our constant here, h minus r sine pi by 4. The integral of cos is sine theta. The integral of sine is minus cos theta. And we've got to remember to be bringing these unit vectors along. The integral of sine cos is sine squared over 2. So this is r sine squared theta over 2. And again, remember the unit vector, i. And then the integral of sine squared, so we have our minus r out there, is theta over 2 minus sine 2 theta over 4. And remember the k unit vector is still there. And that's all evaluated from theta 1 to theta 2. So we've completed the integral. We just need to substitute in the limits. And when I substitute in the limits, I'm also going to gather together all of the i components and all of the k components. So notice we have an i component here and here and a k component here and here. And I want to gather those together so that we can express this as a vector with two components. So still have constants out front here. And so h minus r sine pi by 4 times, first of all, this will be sine of theta 2 minus the sine of theta 1. So I'm substituting in the limits here, minus r over 2. So it's this part. So notice I'm gathering together here everything with an i in it. So that times that has an i in it, and this has an i in it. So minus uh, r over 2 sine squared theta 2 minus sine squared theta 1. So all of that stuff is in the i direction. Now gather together the k component and substitute in the limits. And I'll start that over here. So we have r sine pi by 4 minus h times cosine theta 2 minus cosine theta 1. 
So notice that's this multiplied by that. But because there's a negative sign here, I've swapped the order of this to account for that negative sign. So that's what this is. Minus r over 2, theta 2 minus theta 1. So that's this term right here. Notice that is a k component as well. Plus r over 4. So now I'm working on this part. Sine 2 theta 2 minus sine 2 theta 1. And all of that is in the k direction. So we have an i component gathered together here with the limit substituted in, and the k component all gathered together here with the limit substituted in. Now, remember this expression is giving us the force that the fluid exerts on the gate. Now, we actually know everything inside of this equation, so I'm just going to list those things out here. The density is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Remember, we need that right out front here. G, 9.81 meters per second squared. R, radius of curvature of the gate, is 2 meters. The width of the gate is 6 meters. The H inside of here is the depth of the pool of water, and that's also 2 meters. Theta 1 is our lower limit of integration, so let's go back up to our diagram and remind ourselves what that is. That's this location here. And remember, theta is measured uh, zero in this direction, positive increasing there. So this is actually negative 45 degrees. So theta 1 we'll put as minus pi by 4. Theta 2, we need to be a little bit more careful about getting theta 2. Again, we'll go back up to our diagram here, and I'll just clean this up a little bit. That is our theta 2 right there. So this angle is theta 2. And that distance is 2 meters. And this distance we actually already calculated when we looked at the calculating the constant in the pressure expression. That distance is 2 meters minus 2 sine 45. So in other words, that distance minus this distance is that one. So we can get that theta two from an arc sine function. So this will be arc sine of the opposite of that triangle, which is h minus r sine pi by four divided by the hypotenuse, which is just r. So everything in here we've already listed numbers for here. So this calculates out to point two nine seven two five and that's radians. So everything that we need to substitute in this equation is listed here. So that force, due to the fluid on the surface, works out to minus 117.7 I plus 52.80 K kilonewtons. So let's just go back up to our diagram and see if the sign of those makes sense. Remember, this is the force the fluid exerts on the gate. So we have a negative I component. So certainly this fluid is pushing in the negative X direction. And a positive K component. So it's also pushing upwards or in the positive Z direction. So now we've got the force of the fluid. We can do our sum of forces equals zero. And we recognize all of the forces acting on this. The force of the fluid plus the weight of the gate plus the reaction at the bottom of the pool, Rb, plus the thing we're trying to find, the reaction at the hinge. All of those things have to add up to zero. So the sum of forces is zero. So we can calculate the reaction in the hinge as being minus the force the fluid exerts on the gate, minus the weight, minus the reaction at B. And we have expressions for all three of these things expressed as vectors that we can substitute into here. And I have to remember to change the sign of them because of these minuses. So the reaction at the hinge is equal to 
i minus 52.80k, so that's negative fs, plus 9.81k, so that's negative w, minus 12.49k, that's negative rb, and all of those are in kilonewtons. So finally, the reaction in the hinge is equal to 117.7i. Notice this is the only i component. The rest of these are all k's. Minus 55.48k. And both of those components are kilonewtons. So that's the reaction force in the hinge, or the force that the hinge exerts on the gate.